Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church on this, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. I would like to welcome those who are with us in person to brave the elements. And for those that are joining us via our YouTube channel, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. And we're glad you're able to join us and participate in our worship service this day. As most of you are aware, we are um, in the path of Hurricane Ida. Right now, things are, there's actually a little sunshine shining through the window to my right. Um, but uh, we're, we're in the midst of we're on, uh, the, that hurricane making landfall. We pray that God would keep us all safe and secure in his mighty right hand. Um, our order of service today is Divine Service Setting 4, which is printed for you in your bulletin that you picked up on the way in. And for those worshiping on our YouTube channel, if you haven't already, please click the link in the description of the video. It will take you to a PDF of the service so that you can follow along and participate wherever you happen to be. Uh, there are congregational responses indicated by a scene in bold. Uh, by, at times, I will invite you to stand as you are able. And if you're not able to stand, that's okay um, as well. And we will have, be still your fearful hearts, we will have music to accompany our singing. Right, so I'll be juggling uh, my, my iPad and my remote control for the uh, organ as well. But uh, we're glad you're with us this day, and we're glad you're able to join us in this day which the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it uh, because of, he's brought us here to this place. But let us begin with a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, you have called us here by the power of your Holy Spirit. You've brought us here so that we may listen to your word that is read and proclaimed, a word that leads us to repentance to turn us around, to come back to you, to receive that forgiveness which is ours in Christ Jesus our Lord, that we may be restored into a right relationship with you. Bless this time that we have together as we give you thanks and praise for everything that you continue to do for us through your beloved Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Uh, please join me in singing our hymn of the day. On each of the hymns there will be a brief introduction, then we'll begin singing, but our opening hymn is, Lord, open now my heart to hear, hymn 908. Thank you. service continues with confession and absolution. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made Amen. heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, 
God be merciful to me, a sinner. We'll have a period of silence for reflection on God's word and for self-examination. Let us call unto the Lord. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us into everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Our service will continue with the Kyrie and be immediately followed by the hymn of praise. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O God, the source of all that is just and good, nourish us in every virtue and bring to completion every good intent that we may grow in grace and bring forth the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as our service continues as we speak our verse of the month from John chapter 6 verse 51. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. John 6 51. Our service will continue with the readings. The Old Testament reading for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost is from Deuteronomy chapter 4. And now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the rules that I am teaching you and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? 
And what great nation is there that has statutes and rules so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our service continues as we speak responsibly selected verses of Psalm 119 for the con- for the, and the congregational uh, parts are indicated by C and gold. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. In the hope of your words gives light, it imparts understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pants because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your way with those who love your name. Keep steady my steps according to your promise, and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Redeem me from man's oppression, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shall your tears Keep your law. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you are able for the Alleluia and verse. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you. And understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled. 
Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our service continues as we confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lived, died, and rose again from the dead for us and for our salvation. Amen. Please be seated for the sermon. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, this day we meditate on our appointed gospel reading. And this gospel reading takes place right after the gospel reading we heard last week, which you'll remember, you'll recall, involved the Pharisees uh, speaking in an unkind way, questioning Jesus about why his disciples don't wash their hands before they eat. You see, the Pharisees were all about ritual cleanliness. They would make sure that all the pots and pans and cups and dishes are washed on the outside and the inside. They would make sure that when they came back from the marketplace, where they might have encountered to come into contact with a Gentile, a non-descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, they would make sure that they washed themselves to make sure that they were ritually clean. But Jesus talks about cleanliness not as about the outside of the thing, but about what's on the inside. And he picks up, he speaks to the crowds in our gospel reading for today, to those who are around him, he says, listen up. Hear what I'm about to tell you and understand what I'm about to tell you. There is nothing absolutely nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. Jesus speaks to the crowds and he tells them again, it's not about what's on the outside, it's about what's on the inside that defiles one. And then he leaves the crowd, he and his disciples go into a house And his disciples question Jesus about the parable. And Jesus says, you guys don't get it either? You've been following me all this time and you still don't get it? Are you without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled? Now, your bulletin cover, if you take a look at that, will give you a picture of all the foods that were unclean. And the reason it's on our bulletin this week is because Jesus declares all foods clean. There's squid and shrimp and pork products. Thank goodness pork is clean now. 
Because it's not what goes in that makes one unclean. It's what's inside, Jesus says. You see, because it's what's inside the person that defiles him. What comes out of their heart, that's what defiles them. And Jesus describes what the heart of man is all about. The heart of man is all about evil thoughts. It's all about sexual immorality. It's all about theft. It's all about murder. It's all about adultery. It's all about coveting. It's all about wickedness. It's all about deceit. It's all about sensuality. It's all about envy. It's all about slander. It's all about pride. It's all about foolishness. These are the things that are in the heart, and these are the things that come out of a person, Jesus says, and that, that is what makes them unclean. Now, as I was going through that list, you probably thought to yourself, I don't do that. I haven't done that. I haven't said that. I haven't thought that. But the reality, the truth, is that man's heart is evil. Man's heart is evil all the time. We entered this world in a defiled state. We came into this world corrupted and completely tainted by sin through and through. I may have not taken someone's life physically, but I've murdered plenty of people in my life. As you go through that list of things that Jesus describes, think about the times that you have done that. And the truth is, the truth is we do it all the time. Our old Adam that was, we came into this world with, our heart is tainted by sin and we are defiled by it. But that, thanks be to God, is not the end of our story, my dear friend. You see, it is true that man's heart is on evil all the time. It is true that we do those things in word, thought, and deed that Jesus describes. And we are completely and thoroughly defiled by what comes out of us. But that is not the end of the story for you, my dear friend in Christ. You see, God has changed you. Hear these words from the Apostle Paul from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, where he writes this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation or a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Did, did you hear it? Did, did you hear how you, through Christ Jesus, are a new creature? a new creation, the old you has been put to death. But a new you has arisen and now lives before God in righteousness and purity forever. You see, Paul describes it this way in the book of Romans. We, we know that our old self was crucified with him, that is Jesus, in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved by sin or to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. One has been justified, declared not guilty from sin. You see, that's the good news of Jesus. We who entered the world in a completely defiled state have been made a new creature in Christ Jesus. And if you haven't figured it out, it happened when God gave you the gift of faith and he baptized you into the death and resurrection of Jesus. That's when you were crucified. That's when you were put to death. Your old self was put to death. And a new man emerged. A new creature. A new creation. 
the new is now here. And this is all because of what Jesus has done for us through his life, death, and his resurrection, that he fulfilled the law for you every time that you break it, every time that you've broken it, Jesus fulfilled it for you. Every time you've sinned against God in thought, word, and deed, Jesus took those sins upon himself and gave his innocent, holy blood to pay for your sins and to pay for my sins. This is the good news of Jesus, but it doesn't stop there. Jesus rose from the dead so that death, death with, which entered the world through sin, remember, that's why you and I are going to die someday. We're just not going to die eternally. Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead. And because Jesus rose from the dead, our lives are now different. By grace through faith in Christ Jesus, trusting in his work for our salvation, our old self has been put to death and a new man has emerged to live before God. A one who's been declared not guilty. I didn't say innocent. <laughs> you and I are not innocent. But we are not guilty. Because God has declared us to be not guilty. All because of Jesus. This is why Paul in, in the book of Romans in, in chapter 7 says this. Wretched man that I am. And this comes right after the, you know, the, the, that part where he says, you know, the, the good that I want to do is the thing that I don't do. The, the, the evil things that I don't want to do, that's the very thing that I do do. <clears throat> right at the end of that he says, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Why? Because we have the victory through Christ Jesus. Jesus is the one who saves Paul from this body of death. Jesus is the one who saves us from this body of death. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Not because of what we have done, but because of what God has done for us and continues to do in us. Yes, what you confessed earlier this morning, what you confessed is you said, I did every one of those things that Jesus said. I've had evil thoughts. I've practiced sexual immorality. I've, I've stolen stuff. I've murdered people. I've committed adultery. I've coveted. I've practice wickedness, I've practiced deceit, I've practiced sensuality, I've practiced envy, I've slandered people, I'm a prideful person, and I've engaged in foolishness. You and I answered yes to all that. We checked all the boxes, as they say, because that is who we are in our old self. You see, we are engaged in a battle each and every day, a battle that Paul describes in our reading, in our epistle reading. Right? It's, a, it's not against the authorities of the world. It, it's not against those around us, specifically other people. It's against the evil forces. It's against the devil. But God has given us an armor to see us through, and God would invite us to put on that armor. It's already, it's already ours, but to, to take it up and to utilize it each and every day as we engage in battle against the old Adam and the old evil foe. The truth is, you're here today because you are in need of forgiveness. We are all here today, even those who are with us via our YouTube channel, because we are all in need of restoration, because we gave in to the desires of the flesh. Even though we're a new creature in Christ Jesus, our old Adam tempts us. The old evil foe tempts us. And the truth is we give in. We're not successful in our fight. So we come here to be restored and renewed as the new creatures of God. And that happens through those words of absolution. It happens through the body and blood of Christ that come to us in the sacrament of the altar. God's gifts to us to restore us into a right relationship with him. Because on our own, we will lose the fight. But with God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I will be kept safe and secure in the fight. 
God will bring to completion on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ all that he has begun in us through the waters of holy baptism. He is at work to keep us as a new creature, to make us that new creation in Christ Jesus with each passing day because we have a need, a deep need for everything that God offers, his mercy and his grace. He pours it out upon us in this place. It happens through visible signs like the word, bread and wine. God gives you his gifts to restore you into a right relationship with him so that you can wake up tomorrow and start the battle again so we don't give in to the old Adam. We don't give in to the old evil foe because God has given you a new heart. God has given you a clean heart. That's what it means to live each day in your baptismal grace. Remembering that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus with a clean heart, a new heart, a heart that is right in the eyes of the Lord. Go forth and fight the battle of faith. Go forth with the full armor of God to thwart the old evil foe and to thwart, thwart the old Adam who lives inside each of us. And when you find that you've fallen short, I invite you to come back here so that you can have a new heart and a clean heart that's restored through the forgiveness of sins in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please join me as we sing our hymn of the day, Thy Works Not Mine, O Christ. M 565 with a short introduction and hopefully I haven't missed anything. Mm -hmm.
we also offer prayers of comfort for the family of Steve Galley, who was called home to the Lord earlier uh, the, this past week. And we pray that God will visit them in their time of need to give them his comfort. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of the Holy Spirit at work in the word of truth, that by his direction we would not stray from the way of God's commandments, nor forget the wonderful blessings he has given to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the full armor of God, that clothed in truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation, and bearing the sword of the Spirit, which is his word, God would protect us from every assault of the devil. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy, for protection against everything that defiles in heart and soul, to keep us from all evil thoughts, immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness, and to create a pure heart and renew a right spirit in us, that we may be holy as he is holy. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy, for all pastors and teachers, parents and grandparents, and all who teach the faith, that we may grow in wisdom and the knowledge of God's love in Christ, and that the gospel may continue to spread throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy, for those who struggle with doubt and temptation, that God would assure and deliver them showing himself a refuge for the powerless and strength for every weakness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all in need of health, healing, comfort, solace, wisdom, guidance, and mercy, including Doug, Chris, Matt, Kurt, Billy, David, Deb, Scott, Dan, Irene, Ron, Abigail, Lee, Larry, Anne, Johnny, Bob, Donna, Jennifer, Donna, Jack, Mark, Glenda, Lee, Jackie, James, Carlo, the family of Ola May, Lee, Kermit, Deanna, Joel, June, Patty, Renee, Bill, Joey, Justin, Joshua, Sean, Dylan, Emily, Mary, Cherie, Tommy, Ron, Serena, Nathan, and Kara, Tracy, Olivia, Jamie, Jody, Arnold, Herb, Jeanette, Shirley, Tina, Sonny, Lana, Claire, Missy, Susie, Al, Dana, Randy, Marie, Rich, Midge, Ephraim, Martha, Connie, Evelyn, Owen, Bonnie, Max, Brittany, the family of Prentice, Anita, Grady, Francisco, Judy, Eldon, Hannah, Nick, Eva, Jeff, Pete, Kathleen, David, Neil, Albert, Andrea, Joan, May, Kiyoki, Jim, Susan, Jonathan, John, Amelia, Tracy, David, Lee, Reverend Taglauer, Jerry, Gage, Camille, Philip, Sharon, Dave, Eva, Jean, Lottie, Gail, those impacted by disasters of nature and man, especially those in Haiti, especially for those in Ethiopia, and for those in the path of Hurricane Ida for couples who long for a child and for those who are expecting that the Lord of this life would strengthen them with his word of grace to look for him for comfort in the midst of suffering and pain. And Lord, we especially remember the family of Steve in their time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all those who rejoice over God's good and perfect gifts that come down from above, especially for the gift of, a good, of good medical results for Martha, for a successful surgery for Pete, for the healing and recovery granted to Bob, for another year of life for Lee, Michael, and Justin, and for another year of wedded bliss for Fred and Irene as they celebrate their anniversary this week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For hearts purified by God's cleansing word and aid to lead godly lives before him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all who commune this day, remembering with thanksgiving the salvation accomplished by Christ's cross, that we may proclaim his death and resurrection with joy as we receive Christ's very body and blood in this holy sacrament 
for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we continue our service uh, momentarily with the service of the sacraments of the altar. Uh, normally, we would be taking up a gathering of the gifts, tithes, and offerings of the people of God return to the house of the Lord. Um, if you haven't already done so, you may place your gift, tithe, and offering in the offering plates at the entrance of the sanctuary. For those that are worshiping with us via our YouTube channel, we encourage you to continue to support the work that the Lord has given us to do in this place by sending in your gifts, tithes, and offerings directly to the church office. Um, or if you'd like to drop them off, please call before, we, before you make the trip to make sure that someone is here. Uh, now I'm going to uh, change the orientation of the camera and we'll have a little musical interlude as I prepare the table for the service of the sacrament. I invite you to stand as you are able as our service continues with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. It is, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy Lord, God of You condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in, in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
So, but, but you may come forward and we'll start our next distribution in by Save by Grace.
the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in the sacraments. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word with a short introduction. Once again, and I'm glad you're able to join us on this, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost, even though the weather might be a little frightful outside. It's not too bad right now, so hopefully we'll be able to get home uh, without too much difficulty. But uh, be able to join us next Sunday for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost as we gather together, same time, same place, same channel. We'd like to welcome those who worship with us via our YouTube channel. We, we ask that uh, you, you're, we, well, we hope you're able to join us next Sunday and that uh, the Lord would keep us all safe and secure in his mighty right hand until we can see one another again, especially in the face of the storm. So in the prayer of the church, you heard me mention Ethiopia. Haiti, you probably are familiar with the earthquake. Um, Ethiopia, especially uh, the seminary in Ethiopia, the Makani Jesus Seminary, uh, which is the Lutheran seminary in Ethiopia where uh, the Stinets are, uh, Pastor um, Eric Stinet serves as a missionary to Ethiopia. He's teaching at the seminary. Uh, the Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, um, it's not Abu Dhabi, but anyway, uh, the, the capital city was flooded and the seminary campus was flooded significantly and um, lost lives and uh, a lot of property uh, in that place. So uh, they'll, they will be in need of our prayers and also in need of uh, support to rebuild uh, the facilities as we get more information. I'll share that with you, but just to give you an update about the Stinets, as far as I know, uh, the Stinnett family is okay, but I haven't heard uh, a definitive word on that just yet. But um, we pray for God's hand of comfort and solace in that place and also his hand of rebuilding and restoration in that place as well. Uh, the seminary seeks to train men to go out and preach the gospel to those in Ethiopia. Um, all right, uh, the announcements then are in the green sheet. The green sheet is a devotional resource for uh, individuals, families, and small groups built around the orders of daily prayer found in our hymnal. Uh, we're reading uh, through the Bible in two years. We're into the book of Hebrews. We started that on Saturday. We're going to continue that for a number of weeks. On the inside are those that have requested prayers from the congregation, in addition to those that I shared with you earlier. And then on the back are the announcements. So uh, the, po the, the 
Redeemer's uh, 20th anniversary celebration has been postponed. It's going to be postponed for a couple of weeks. They haven't set the date when they, when they make that announcement. I'll share that with you but because of uh, now Hurricane Ida. Uh, but uh, then, uh, sort of Ida. Uh, Saturday, this coming Saturday, is an LWML meeting. Um, all the ladies in the congregation are invited to join them uh, at 10 o'clock. The theme for that, for that meeting will be Graceful Women, uh, using based on Ephesians 4.32. Uh, you're invited to join them for a time of fellowship and a study of God's word and also some business. Uh, the grief share support. So hopefully everybody got the, the voice message that was sent out uh, yesterday. I'm, in light of the storm, I'm going to cancel our uh, grief share. I'm going to postpone our grief share class session this afternoon. Uh, until we'll pick that up next Sunday. Uh, so no grief share this afternoon. And then the altar flowers today have been given, this week have been given to the glory of God by Mitch Marlowe. Uh, the food of the month for the Tangy Food Pantry for September is spaghetti and red sauce, or spaghetti sauce as I would call it. Um, just bring that in, place it in the wicker basket in the cross hallway. We try to deliver that uh, once a week as we have ability um, to do that to help those in need. And then there's a stewardship thought and a life thought for you. And those are things that you can not, not only ponder for yourself, but share with others in your life too, um, that they may, that they may uh, be blessed by God's word as well. All right, any announcements that I'm not aware of? Seeing no hands, I will greet you in the back momentarily or dismiss you from the back. Uh, may we all be safe and secure. And as the phone message said, phone message said, please check in after the storm by calling me or texting me on my cell phone so that I know that you're okay. So that you know, it's easier for you to call one person than it is for me to call 160 people, okay? So that's why I'm asking you to do that. That way I know uh, that you're safe and secure and if there are any problems that, need, that you need some assistance with, okay? Uh, but have, uh, be safe and secure, get home in a, a safe fashion and the Lord will see us through uh, this, storm, this storm. So I will dismiss you momentarily from the back and for those on our YouTube channel, be safe and uh, we hope to see you next Sunday.